Hey guys, SGTO3 here, um, bringing you back to the Maple Tabletop for a brief update on the Bob Lum encounter from Seki Cut, uh, Seki City, Japan. Um, so last video, just unboxed, got my initial impressions and uh, was kind of initial impressions were a very good feel in the hand, uh, overall kind of handle geometry was very good is very good um you know i talked about in the in a previous video that there are some things that you can do uh in terms of modifications and one question to ask is if this knife was more expensive what additional hand processes kind of hand finishing hand fitting processes would have gone into this blade at a higher price point. Um, and uh, one of those things I definitely would like to point out here is um, the inside liners, these steel liners, are sh very sharp on the inner edge. Yeah, I don't know if you can kind of hear, but it's really grabbing on my finger. Um, so and you feel that all around even even just a tight grip like that you you do actually feel those inner edges quite a bit um that's gonna pinch you pretty hard um over time so so in terms of the handle that, that's one thing uh so since you got these nice phillips heads uh you know phillips head here here and there um you can really Take, just take this apart and deburr those inner edges. Um, so after now um, spending some time with both of these blades, this is the D2 blade and this is the VG10 uh, with the stainless steel Damascus. Um, I do have a, a little kind of assessment. Um, out of the three knives that I purchased, um, including the um, Encusta uh, basic folder and uh, ebony, ebony handles. Um, I, f I feel that the D2, uh, these blades cut the cut better. Um, they're wider, um, so the, the bevel is a more gradual expansion to the thickness of the blade, whereas this is a more squat blade, has a more fast transition to the blade thickness. So it wants to push the material away from the blade harder as you're cutting. So this is actually not really the best knife for, for slicing, um, unless you pop it on the belt sander and make it, uh, make it a flat ground, take out the hollow grind and really just blast it down to flats, which I very, uh, very well might do. Um, so these are the better cutters, you know, look at the blade profile there. It's a nice thick blade. It's a super fine edge. Um, these sliced really well, and this is just cutting maple. Um, you know, this is just basically taking just a, a little piece of maple and just carving down and basically feeling which one takes the least amount of strength to remove material. And I found, I really like the, the D2 one. Um, so there are some kind of unfortunate uh, negatives of these blades that I'm just gonna go over real quickly uh, just to let you know that these Bob Lum encounters um, don't really meet my uh, requirements in terms of um, the attention to detail that they were made with. Um, I, can't, I, I especially in a folding knife, I really feel like I require something more uh, to, really, to really feel good about it. Um, and let me just go over these points really briefly. So the first point I already hit on, and that is that the handle uh, inner edges are very sharp. The steel liners are very sharp. Um, and, you know, that's basically a hand finishing issue. You take these scales apart and uh, kind of 45 degree over those angles, maybe polish it a bit, and it's going to feel great in the hand. 
Now, another big problem that I had with the, both of these blades is first look at the blade itself. I mean, that is a, that's quite a bit blade and it's got a really fine point. It's got a very, look at how it kind of, it gets almost flat down here. It almost has recurve down here near the tip. So it's a very fine point and it's very, very sharp. Um, I mean, that, that's very sharp. You can see how far that point is. So what I'm getting at here is this is a sharp and pointy blade. If you catch yourself just a little bit on that, there's really no forgiveness on that. And the fact that the liners, even they're, they're the sharp edge liners, but whatever gauge steel, I didn't actually measure that. It looks to be like a 16th of thickness. It's not, so I'm getting up to the lock now. The thickness of the liners is not in the design of this piece is not sufficient. It doesn't provide enough tension to spring the liner lock into position. It does not. Um, I mean, a blade of that magnitude, in my opinion, really requires a formidable lock. Even if you're gonna add weight to the liners uh, in terms of making them thicker and more durable. Here's a little example. Um, on the Incusta, the liners are markedly thicker. And what you end up getting is higher tension in your liner lock. And it's a more positive, secure lock. I'm at this point fairly confident in this liner lock, although I don't really Again, it's not a fixed blade knife. Uh, it's not a full tang knife, you know, it's a folder. Um, but that's a fairly secure lock. Um, what, the problem I have with, with this lock in particular is that it takes, I mean, it takes so little pressure to get that out of the way and it barely engages. In fact, Watch this, when I pull the blade open, pull it open and I push that lock, see how I can push this all the way past the blade like that? That's a fitting issue as well. But now watch when I pull it again, watch where this naturally wants to seat again. So that's, that's its natural maximum travel is kind of just right there. Um, it's thin. It's a thin liner lock and like I'm barely using the side of my finger. And there it is. There it goes. Now, that is a really sharp, really pointy blade to be operating with a lock that is that delicate. In my opinion, this lock is insufficient for this blade. Um, it really kind of takes away, it takes away from the blade as a whole because the lock. Um, now another issue I had, um, just trying to go down the list here, the, both of the clips are set in with three Phillips head screws. Now I don't know if you can see here, but see how the screws protrude past the liner? These screws actually contact the blade. Um, they are grinding against the blade. Um, Mama! No, barking. So right out of the box from the factory, these clip screws are protruding through the metal liner and they are actually physically touching and grinding the blade. Uh, which I thought was really unfortunate. Um, now another issue, this is the VG10 Dam Damascus, and I'll explain the quote throw up in a minute, but I'll say Dam VG10 Damascus. Um, the clip on this one engages a little bit better. I mean the lock rather. Um, it is that same gauge kind of thin steel. Now, 
if you look inside, um, I'm going to just do some pointing here with the other blade while being careful. So inside this lock, right in there, there's a little kind of ball bearing, kind of just touching it, little ball bearing set into the liner lock. And that little ball bearing's job is to, when you push the lock down, that ball bearing, you can kind of see it right there. See how when the blade pops up on it, it pushes that liner lock flush with the frame and allows the blade to close all the way. Now, when I was operating this knife and, and opening and closing the blade, I was wondering, why can't I flick this knife? Why is it so hard to use? Besides the screws up here grinding against the blade, um, I looked at, took a look at that ball bearing and I realized that that little ball bearing in there, or that, that bearing or bearing surface, it's not actually a ball bearing, I believe. Uh, it's actually covered in rust. So that little bearing surface that pushes that liner down is actually already corroded. And that's out of the box from the factory. I have uh, some rust and corrosion going on in that bearing surface. Um, now, looking back to the D2 uh, blade, I looked at the bearing. Um, this bearing does not have any rust, so that's that's decent. Um, but I do hear when I open and close the blade, there's a lot of it's it's hard. It's not super smooth. Um, you know, you don't want the blade to just fly closed and close on its own. You kind of want it to stop. It's just safer when you're dealing with a clo closing blade of this magnitude. Um, but that little bearing surface in there is also pretty grindy. Um, now, the screws that anchor this clip in were are smaller than the... Uh, they were ground a bit shorter than the other ones, so they didn't protrude through the liner. Um, you can see that they're not protruding from the liner on the inside there. Um, so I did email, um, I believe uh, name is Koki Iwahara um, from Kencrest Corporation, uh, which is who I pur purchased these knives uh, through um, JapaneseKnifeDirect.com. And uh, they were more than happy to uh, to receive the knives um, and to bring them back to the maker to to have them uh, taken a look at. But um, so basically, uh, I I don't, I don't think I'm going to send them back. Uh, kind of just the process of sending these off international, and uh, I am just going to go ahead and do the modifications that I. Um, kind of hinted at with the liner deburring and um, I think I think that'll basically be set. I did want to comment real quick on the quality of this so-called uh, Damascus steel. Just trying to focus up here. So you see up here how you have these kind of topographical circular areas. Now you see in between the kind of hilltops you, know, you would see on a topographical, topographical map, there's just nothing. So in this area in here, and in between over here, it's just nothing. There's nothing there. And that's not what you would see in true Damascus steel. You, you don't. So... You know, down here you see the kind of steel layers. When you get up to the top, it's just these isolated islands of circles that are raised. They're bumpy. It's almost as if they're on the surface. And then there's just, in between, there's zero. There's no lines. There's no nothing. It's just, there's not even a hint of any lines or anything in between these kind of raised circles. 
So this leads me to believe that this is kind of a this is kind of a factory finish. This is not actual steel structure. That is actually a pattern or a finish that is essentially probably stamped. Um, maybe maybe stamped in the blade or something. Um, down here, the edge of this Damascus, that's, I assume it's supposed to look, it's supposed to be reminiscent of um, a Japanese uh, sword, a, a katana, hamon, or a, a hamon down a wakazashi or something. So this is supposed to mimic that, but it is, it's very raised and it's significantly more raised than the rest of this material. It almost feels like solder. It's, I don't know what it is. Um, but see, so you can see some of the, more of the lines up there. So we got, so we got some layer action in there. But whatever, whatever is on this flat up here, I don't think is actually part of the way this steel was made, because you wouldn't have these islands and then just nothing in between them. That makes no sense at all. Um, so again, you can see that the, the, it is triple layer. You can see in the spine, you can see the central core and the two cheeks. Uh, so it is a triple layer lamination. Um, I'm just not sure what's going on up here. So I think that's more of a finish effect. Um, flip it over here, show you the other side. So there you go. Kind of just these isolated islands with just plain steel in between that have no idea how they would produce that effect if this is um damascus all right guys so all in all i would have to say these are great blades um i really wish that the other components we're good enough to support a blade that is as good as these blades. I would, I want to love and would love to have this D2 blade as kind of like my go-to blade. Um, but the issue with the liner lock just barely even working, just putting, putting so little pressure on it, really, it just unlocks so easily that I can't, I can't recommend it. I cannot tell you guys you should go and buy this Bob Lum Encounter from Seki Cut. In fact, I'm going to say that for this price point, I would suggest to not purchase these Bob Lum Encounters. Um, for the price point, uh, I think, and in, in really to set these blades on fire in terms of desirability, uh, the liners need to be upgraded in a big type of way. The liner locks need to be upgraded in a big type of way. The bearing surface on the liner lock or that pushes down the liner lock and allows the blade to close, that is rusting uh, right out of the box and obviously needs to be upgraded in a, in a pretty big type of way. Um, so Bob Lum encounters... Um, you know, for straight on cutting, slicing, sli it's got high slice factor. Um, the, the blade quality itself is really good. Um, the, the other fittings kind of fall a bit short. Um, so for that price point, I would shop around a little bit more and I would conclude um, that the Bob Lum, Bob Lum encounters are a do not buy. All right, guys, just a brief update for you. I wanted to keep it on uh, in the uh, sub 20 minute range, uh, but I did want to give you a little update on my encounter with the Bob Lum encounters from Seki Cut. All right, guys, good day. SGT03 out.